even historical events in both books are more or less the same, but there are small but devastating differences. For example, the Quran refers to the king of Egypt as king in the story of Joseph and as Pharaoh in the story of Moses, which is historically correct because the word Pharaoh was not used until the new kingdom. But the Bible refers to the king of Egypt as Pharaoh in both stories, which is historically incorrect. The Bible claims that followers of Moses in Egypt were about 600,000 men on foot besides women and children. So the total, if you add the women and children, will be one or two million people, right? But the same book of Exodus says that Pharaoh appointed only two women to deliver their babies and to kill their boys. How can two women deliver and kill babies of one or two million people? That's logically and mathematically impossible. While in the Quran, it says that the believers who followed Moses were a few, which makes more sense. Also, the Bible claims that there were two different pharaohs during the journey of Moses, which is historically impossible. Check out this in-depth explanation from our friends at One Islam Productions. Neither the Bible nor Quran identifies the pharaoh of Moses by name. We can use the details provided in the scriptures to try to identify the pharaoh. Both scriptures speak of the Israelites being taken into slavery before the birth of Moses. The use of Semites for slave labor occurred only during the New Kingdom period. So, we can place Moses somewhere in the New Kingdom period. This gives us a list of 33 possible pharaohs. Both scriptures also speak of an exodus of the Israelites out of Egypt. The Menepta Stele is an important artifact that contains the first explicit reference to Israel in the archaeological record. It is dated to around 1208 BCE. It discusses the land of Canaan and mentions the Israelites in relation to Canaan, indicating that the exodus had already taken place by this date. The artifact is contemporaneous to the pharaoh Menepta. This means that the exodus had to take place before Menepta, since Menepta was alive and in power after the exodus and not drowned in the sea. This establishes an upper boundary in the timeline of the pharaohs. From the point of view of both the Bible and Quran, we are now left with 18 pharaohs as candidates who may have ruled during the time of Moses. Let's now delve deeper into the biblical narrative. The Bible claims that there were two different pharaohs who were in power. The first died while Moses was in hiding in Midian. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The new Pharaoh continued his predecessor's persecution of the Israelites, and it was the second Pharaoh who was later drowned when Moses crossed the sea. The Bible gives us a timeline for these events. The burning bush encounter with God took place when Moses was 80 years old. So from his birth to the Exodus, there was a span of at least 80 years, during which two pharaohs ruled Egypt. Now, there is a big problem if we compare this biblical narrative to the timeline of the pharaohs. We've seen that the Bible claims exactly two pharaohs ruled during the 80 year period, from the birth of Moses to the Exodus. If we consider the number of years that each of the pharaohs ruled, we can see that there is no 80 year period during which only two pharaohs ruled. Any given 80 year period will give you at least three pharaohs in power. We can see that the biblical narrative contradicts the historical evidence. Let's now compare the Quranic narrative. Unlike the Bible, the Quran depicts a single pharaoh reigning from the birth of Moses all the way up to the Exodus. The Quran informs us that Moses fled to Midian when he reached the age of maturity. The Quran defines the age of maturity as 40 years old. The Quran also informs us that during his time in Midian, Moses spent eight to 10 years in the service of his father-in-law before returning to Egypt to face Pharaoh. This means that Moses was at least 48 years of age when the Exodus happened. The only Pharaoh during the New Kingdom period who had such a lengthy reign as an absolute ruler was Ramesses II, who ruled for 66 years. The Quranic account is perfectly in line with the historical evidence and fixes the chronological issues that are present in the biblical narrative. The Quran makes the following claim about the Pharaoh of Moses, who God drowned in the sea. 
فاليوم ننجيك ببدنك لتكون لمن خلفك آية We can see that the Qur'an explicitly states that the Pharaoh's body will be preserved as a sign for future generations. Note that the Qur'an never makes such a statement about any of the other destroyed nations that it discusses, typically stating that their abandoned buildings and ruins have been made signs for later generations. This claim about a body being preserved is unique to the Pharaoh of Moses. The body of Ramesses II was discovered by archaeologists in the year 1881 CE. The mummy has been on display in the Cairo Museum, and over the last century, it has been seen by millions of tourists from all over the world. In the following documentary, Sir Tony Robinson states that Ramesses II is one of the few pharaohs whose body has survived largely intact. Just across the river from Luxor lies the famous Valley of the Kings, where Ramesses himself was buried. His mummy was discovered in 1881 one of the few pharaohs whose body has survived largely intact. Historically, priests had concealed his body in a secret location in the year 1000 BCE because of a problem with grave robbers. Nothing was known about his mummy in the intervening period of almost 3000 years. At the time the Quran was revealed, the whereabouts and fate of Pharaoh's body was unknown. During the 3000 year period, in which the body was hidden, it could easily have been damaged or stolen. It may have even remained lost forever, locked away in its secret location, never to be rediscovered. If you think about it, these statements in the Quran are not only historically accurate, but also represent quite a bold prophecy. Another example. The Bible claims that Joseph was sold for 20 shekels of silver to some Arabs outside Egypt while the Quran states that the sale happened inside Egypt. Now, thanks to archaeologists, we know that silver coins were only used in Egypt at that time period. That makes the story in the Bible extremely weird. And the last example for this video, because we don't want this video to be hours long, the Bible claims that a gold coin named Derek was used at the time of King David. But historians point out that Darek is named after the Persian leader Darius the Great, who lived hundreds of years after King David. Even the Jewish encyclopedia itself acknowledges this error. Our conclusion is, we believe in God, we believe in all of his prophets, and we have...